Hello, thank you for joining us. My name is Maggie Winter and I'd like to like to talk to you today about the an infrastructure to support vibrant neighborhood businesses. Um, this is a proposal and an analysis of a commercial corridor along Beta Bay and McDill Beta Bay Boulevard and McDill Avenue in the Palmasea neighborhood. The my computer is frozen. Oh. Um, okay, excuse me for that little pause. So I'd like to begin with a general statement on the lens and philosophy that I have approached this proposal. Um, thinking about the priorities and what it takes to create strong and strong neighborhoods and resilient cities. We're looking at complete streets, urban vitality, and the environment as three priorities to balance within any, any thriving neighborhood. Um, and I'd like to read the statement that small businesses are the heart of our neighborhoods and the anchors that make our cities unique. In the light of current hardships, the recovery is our collective recovery. The following pages are the beginning of an exploration of many ways that the public realm can support healthy and thriving communities. So we started by diving into the Palmasay neighborhood and just listening to people, reading a lot about the responses and surveys that the residents have completed. And we found that Palmasay community has a lot to be proud of. The neighborhood is very safe. And yet 72% of those surveyed were concerned with traffic related safety. So there is room for improvement um, for the, in the pedestrian realm. We found that Beta Bay should, the, among the priorities, the community felt that Beta Bay should first and foremost serve as a traditional main street for adjacent neighborhoods. And that is a large focus of what we, what has been proposed in the following pages. Um, but also the residents are looking for that balance of, a destination um, and as a connector for traffic flowing through the community. Also, we found that trees and street streetscape um, were lacking in general, um, as according to residents, and that is a high priority need. Throughout the course of the semester, um, we embarked in a number of mapping exercises to start looking at different scales of the community development. We found that density is in fact high enough to support a commercial quarter of the scale. Currently, infrastructure does not though support that. So the pedestrian realm, again, we're talking about complete streets and how people interact with their neighborhood once they get out of their car. Um, that says a lot about a community's vibrance. So we looked at walkability throughout the neighborhood, amenities and um, anchors, institutions. So not only where people live, but how they, um, where they're going throughout the day and all generations too. So school age children, all the way up to um, senior care facilities um in neighboring neighboring areas we looked at potential of the land use element and the build out the existing scale of buildings and we found that current building uses do not take advantage of their potential so they they could be the infrastructure and the building form could has room for transformation um, we found that setbacks along the street are inconsistent. So talking about rhythm of the street, we looked at form and physicality, the physical condition, um, shadows and mapping trees. We looked at destinations and occupancy, the what time of day, what vibrancy, what businesses and how often they're located. We looked at open spaces and parking, um, as you'll see throughout this presentation that um, transportation and mobility is, is a large focus, not only as well as the buildings themselves. Um, and then we just got out and walked the street. So what we experienced is that the sidewalk is not currently compatible with pedestrian needs or comfort. Despite the businesses that seem to be successful and thriving along these two streets that we examined, um, there are not very many opportunities for a pedestrian or a bicycle rider to comfortably 
travel in between them or to get to them other than in their own car. And you'll, you'll hear themes repeated throughout this presentation, but we asked ourselves questions like, is this a comfortable walk? Is the environment comfortable? Um, is it a safe walk? And you'll see on these pages a couple um, hotspots and repeating conditions that we found to be concerning for pedestrian safety and accessibility, um, both for walking with babies and for visually and physically impaired pedestrians and community members. <clears throat> is there a reason to walk? Is it an interesting walk? So that's, again, talking about community vibrance and um, just being an overall welcoming community. There are many restaurants, there are many businesses that, um, that deserve a public realm that is as inviting as the businesses themselves. So again, another level of analysis, drawing, starting to take the photographs from our experiences and looking at the architectural elements, the scale, the section, the impediments throughout. Um, and we found there are diversity of uses, but they're diminished by this, the the scale of the street itself um, or the experience of those diverse buildings. We found that there are some low hanging fruit and some high, high hanging fruit as far as transformations and opportunities. Um, and again, repeating the themes that we've been hearing from residents throughout this process, we are looking a lot at the street condition and trying to find where there's room, room for people, room for cars, and room for bicycles and public transportation, right? So finding that balance between mobility and the experience itself. These, so we did a number of sections looking at place and in both on the ground plane and the physical experience of in a, throughout a section. These are again section plans and sections at key intersections um, through along Beta Bay Boulevard and McDill. The intersection of those two streets is going to be critical and also provides um, an anchor, a potential anchor with future transit oriented development. So the principles moving into the actual proposal itself after we take took all of what we learned and tried to synthesize it into a list of potential solutions, um, a grab bag, if you will, of different solutions at multi multiple scales, you know, things that could be done immediately and things in the long term planning realm. We took a list of 10 principles for neighborhood and public realm development and prioritize those. The top three again would be complete streets, the social dimension and urban vitality, the environment and open space supported by seven other priorities that would also, that have a lot to do with those first three, but can stand alone if we're trying to isolate an element and a principle that would pertain to, that would pertain to development. So the complete streets, if we're looking at an intersection as an example, what you see here is a section cut through Beta Bay Boulevard at, um, at a typical intersection. This is one that we have heard at Ferdinand used to be used as a safe crossing street for the neighborhood school children. So it is of particular interest to try and find ways that pedestrians can then reclaim and safely cross Beta Bay Boulevard and connect, reconnect the neighborhood. So we found that the north side of Beta Bay and the south side of Beta Bay cannot easily access, access the other side. So we looked at assumptions and challenges to creating a complete street. Um, the, what elements would contribute to a multimodal green and functional environment? We looked at the zones of the street room and what parts, what, what elements, um, how many lanes do we need to balance flow? We looked at the pet pet potential pedestrian and bus areas. What you see in here is one version of a section perspective that could 
could include those different elements of the street, the car realm, the bus realm, the bicycle realm, the pedestrian realm, and then that gradation between semi-public and, and public commercial space. Where is there room to share? So a little, a higher level of technicality, you're looking, you're gonna see this one suggestion of taking the existing right of way and looking for spaces where the setback is a little bit further um, than the, at the right of way itself, so a higher than zero setback essentially, and finding areas that maybe the, the sidewalk realm can expand and or share with um, what is currently parking in a lot of the spaces. So, but more importantly, we're prioritizing safety. We're prioritizing a connected network for all users. How do those elements um, pull themselves together and create a, a flowing and safe mobility system? So at, at the base level, sidewalks need to be a minimum of six feet. They need to be level and they need to be unobstructed. Accessible surfaces are a priority, and we suggest that the reduction and limitation of curb cuts by looking at shared entrances between businesses or side, side and back entrances when it's at a corner condition. Um, there are various ways that parking can be reconfigured, reconfigured to minimize the curb cuts and increase the safety of pedestrians walking along the street. Um, we reduce the speeds at intersections by making smaller corner, corner radius and with safer and well-marked street crossings at various locations. Um, existing blocks and rhythm is unlikely to change. That's We understand that the infrastructure of this community has been this way for a long time, but it is actually quite successful. The scale is walkable. The block size is of a, of a comfortable human scale because of its age in some ways. It's actually quite, um, quite well designed, but there are, there are some transformations that can be made to assist and help people move about in, in this world. So this image is a, a long-term rendering showing um, potential transit-oriented development at the intersection of Beta Bay and McDill. We're looking to consider pedestrian scramble at that intersection to make, um, once there is pedestrian activity, to make it a little bit more efficient and safer for pedestrians to cross in either direction. Improving transit service is a top priority and bicycle infrastructure. We understand that Bay to Bay connects to Bayshore Boulevard, which is a beloved resource throughout the community and having that physical connection to be able to experience both of these places at the same time is, is, is very important. Um, the second priority is the social dimension and urban vitality. So again, getting people out of their cars. Uh, we're looking at history of the Palmasea neighborhood and we understand the historic identity evolves over time and along with resources. So the Palmasea Springs had had a, a beautiful pool that was used and loved and it is no longer, it's now now a park, um, but what does what what did that contribute to the community? And how can small gestures spark the same kind of transformation that restores some of that pride and just getting people together and out and about? Um, so some simple gestures, we wanna tip our hats to business owners along the streets that are already taking the initiative to, for, for these kind of transformations. They're reclaiming parking spaces and underutilized pavement areas to create um, places for people. Interim catalyst projects and programming are hugely successful through, um, throughout the United States and in other countries. We're looking at night programming because Tampa's weather is as pleasant at it, as it is throughout the year. Programming has, has a different kind of potential. Um, evening programming in hot cities is, is quite successful and low cost programming such as the, the existing deputy Cutfield and Memorial Park under the expressway. So we know that it can happen. We want to start small and we want to use street furniture as a visual cue throughout the neighborhood to help create, to help craft a sense of identity and the feeling that you are here, right? You've landed in a place, you're not just traveling through it. And this is a place that is loved by its community. 
In addition to that, the environment is of utmost importance. Um, crafting a microclimate with trees and shade and breeze, um, again, shade, and improving the stormwater management and, and just natural elements of this neighborhood also improves the vitality and economic, and both economic and social. With little shade currently, there are not very many opportunities or welcome moments for a pedestrian to stop and enjoy the products that they're going to purchase on this street yet. But it, it is a, the type of thing that can easily and over time just become really special. And the existing shade right now, if you watch pedestrian activity, um, is actually under the expressway. So again, looking at underutilized spaces that have an amenity. Shade is an amenity in this neighborhood. We're looking at long-term um, development and potential transit-oriented development at this intersection. We're looking at the sidewalk limitations and opportunities. So a couple of the existing buildings and anchors within the community are built to the right-of-way. So how does how does how do we reconcile that relationship to the sidewalk? Um, but again, pedestrian safety is a priority. So talking about pedestrian safety on, on a relatively thin right of way, if there was a bike lane in between car traffic, we're looking at the slowdown of speeds and the physical comfort and safety of a person walking down the sidewalk, um, just giving them a little bit more room. With a turning lane, rather, with a turning lane, we reduce the slowdowns through the lanes that are still traveling. So the it is our assumption that this format with one turning lane and one travel lane in each direction in combination with the other suggestions that we've that we've provided including the reduction of curb cuts will actually help tr the flow of traffic rather than slow it down um, despite the loss of one lane or in one travel direction the other elements that we want to talk about are local identity. You've seen that woven throughout this presentation and lighting. So again, local identity and lighting can be locally designed and crafted elements, um, which you've seen successfully implemented throughout Tampa and in other cities of the United States. But just finding an aesthetic that you that helps people understand they've found a very special place. Right? So it doesn't have to be explicit, but it's consistent and it's a theme that feeds into the rhythm of the built infrastructure of this neighborhood. We're looking at, excuse me, we're looking at um, potential facade improvement, capturing facade improvement support um, for small businesses and activation of facades. So we understand that the, eco the economy can co go up and go down, but in these times there are small gestures that can be made um, in windows and storefronts and to support small businesses, to help them thrive, to help them open up. We're looking at temporary furniture programming, again, with those short-term um, catalyst improvements uh, that can help get people outdoors and um, remind us how many opportunities and businesses are already on this street. Uh, um, and in this corridor. So again, we celebrate multimodal transportation, helping people get out and about um, in any way, shape, and form that they can, capturing opportunities for every bit of the population, right? So the school children, the moms, the dads, the people going to work, the elderly who may be transportation limited, um, so looking again at this, the express, the Selman Express and the open space, what would you dream up? What kind of murals could we dream up with the community um, that really would only, that wouldn't take much to just get started? So I'm going to end this presentation by asking you for social participation. Go ahead and get shady under the freeway, right? So what... These are five different examples in Boston, Melbourne, Grenoble, Toronto, and Seattle that of places who have reclaimed their space. Thank you for listening.